Have you recently fallen over and suffered a knee injury and you're wondering what on earth could be going on? If you have, this is the video for you. My name is Will Harlow and I'm the over 50s specialist physio here at HT Physio in Farnham. And today we're going to be talking about some of the possible knee injuries that can be sustained from a fall. Now, before we dive into the topic, please, if you don't mind, could you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to get more content like this, because it really helps me to reach more people just like you and to help others in the community who are suffering with a painful problem. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the types of knee injuries that can be sustained from a fall. Now, I'm going to caveat this video by saying any time you've experienced trauma from a fall or you've had a big knock to your knee, you should always, always go and get checked out by a qualified medical professional who can tell you exactly what you've done. Injuries are different for everyone and need to be managed in different ways. So if you haven't already, make sure you go and get checked out. Now, that being said, let's talk about some of the common things that can happen when we fall onto our knee. We're going to be talking about four very common knee injuries that can be sustained from a fall today. Now, a knee injury sustained from a fall can be uh, dependent on a number of different factors, including how hard you fall, which way you fall, what you landed on when you fall, and the list goes on and on and on. But the first thing we would always want to rule out after a fall onto the knees is a fracture. Now, I've seen fractures from falls onto the knees before, and if you fall directly onto your knee, if you fall forwards, the most common place to fracture is your kneecap, okay? Now, people who are particularly at risk of fracturing their kneecap are women over the age of 50, so past the menopause, and the reason is the menopause can cause a change in hormones which can lead to a thinning of the bones. So what we're gonna talk about today is the, the signs and symptoms of a knee fracture. Now the first sign and symptom of a knee fracture is tenderness to touch, okay? So if you're pressing on the area that's sore and it causes you to jump, so it's pinpoint tenderness and you can tell exactly where the pain is and you can't tolerate someone touching it, that is a key sign of a fracture. Another key sign of a fracture is a huge amount of swelling around the area. Now, of course, swelling can be due to a number of different factors, but in a fracture, there's almost always a lot of swelling. Another symptom of a fracture is a serious difficulty in weight bearing through that leg. Now, obviously, after we sustain an injury, there are lots of things that can happen that can cause pain on weight bearing. But if it's been a few hours and you just can't put any weight through that leg, I would be starting to worry about a fracture. So those are the three key things to look for. We've got swelling, we've got pinpoint tenderness, and we've got an inability to weight bear. So those are your three key signs to look for. If any of those signs are present, then we should be heading for an X-ray straight away. Now, the second thing you can do when you fall and injure your knee is you can tear something called the meniscus. Now, the meniscus is a thick layer of fibrocartilage that sits in between the two main bones in the knee, the femur, which is the thigh bone, and the tibia, which is the shin bone. So this is the meniscus. And the meniscus is a shock absorber, okay? When we're walking, shock goes up through our legs, the meniscus absorbs it so it doesn't go right up into the hips and then the spine. So it's a very important structure. Now the problem with the meniscus is it's very tightly bound down to the tibia, which means that if we twist as we fall, it's prone to tearing. Especially for people over the age of 50, the meniscus tends to be a bit drier than it is when we're younger, which means that it's more brittle and more prone to getting tiny tears. Now the signs and symptoms of a meniscus tear are tenderness right over the line of the joint, not quite as tender as a fracture, but enough to be uncomfortable when you press and prod. Sometimes the knee can give way, so you can be walking okay and then suddenly it will go. That can be another sign of a meniscus tear. And a further sign of a meniscus tear is something called locking. And locking happens where you move the knee in such a way that suddenly it gets stuck. You can't do anything for a few seconds. You have to use your hands to shake it off and then you can move the knee again. That's called mechanical locking and it can be a sign of a meniscus tear. 
Now, if you have any of those symptoms, it's very important to go and get checked out. And you can't see a meniscus tear on an x-ray. For that, you would need an MRI. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about when it comes to knee injuries from a fall is just a bruised knee. So with a bruised knee, what we're going to likely see is a lot of swelling, similar to the swelling we see if someone was to fracture their knee, but we'd also see um, quite a lot of discoloration around it, which again, we might get in a fracture. But the thing that would be mostly missing from the fracture would be the tenderness. So if you've bruised yourself, you know it's not very comfortable to press and prod, but it's still possible. Whereas with a fracture, often it's almost unbearable to touch it. So if the knee's quite big and swollen and you can weight bear on it okay, but you, you know, when you press on it, it still feels just about okay to press on, I would be more suspecting of a bruised knee as opposed to a fracture. Now with any trauma, it's still important to get checked out. So an X-ray is a good idea just to back up the theory. Now with a bruised knee, what we tend to find is that um, there's still quite a lot of pain and stiffness when you move and bend it, but it improves as time goes on reasonably quickly. Now you can speed up the healing from a bruised knee by applying ice to the area, keeping it elevated and not doing any sort of extreme movements like squatting or walking um, too fast. So keep the walking to a minimum, keep it rested, keep the leg raised, keep the ice on it and it should start to return to a normal size. And then the final common injury we're going to talk about when it comes to a knee injury from a fall is a ligament sprain. Now it's possible to sprain any one of four main ligaments in the knee. So I'll show you the ligaments. We've got the medial collateral ligament on the inside of the knee, and this joins the thigh bone to the shin on the inside. On the other side, we've got a smaller ligament called the lateral collateral ligament. And again, this joins the thigh bone to uh, this time the fibula, which is the smaller bone on the outside of the, uh, of the calf. So if you have a side to side injury, so if you fall on your side and you knock the inside or the outside of your knee, you can tear the opposite ligament. So if I knock this side of the knee, that one could be injured. And if I knock this side of the knee, this one could be injured. Now, if we wanted a, a, to look at a more serious ligament sprain, we can look at the inside of the knee. And inside of the knee, we have two main ligaments. One is called the anterior cruciate ligament, which is the one that most people have heard of. It's the commonly injured one in skiing and football. And we also have the posterior cruciate ligament, which is just as important, but it's less commonly injured. Now, the posterior cruciate ligament is often injured if someone whacks their shin very hard. So the typical injury for this is a car crash. So someone will crash, the front dash smashes the, the front of their knee and it sends their shin backwards and then that can injure the posterior cruciate ligament, also called the PCL. Now the anterior cruciate, the ACL, often happens in a similar way to the meniscus. So it could be a twist, it could be sometimes quite innocuous, so if you step down a curb and your, and your knee gave way and you fell, that can sometimes be the cause of an anterior cruciate ligament. Now, if you have either of these ligaments uh, injured, what usually happens is the knee will swell, but it will swell more slowly and you will have an instability when you walk. There might not be that much pain. It might just feel like something's out of place. You don't really trust your knee. It feels like it might give way. Those are all very um, common symptoms for a ligament injury. Now again, with ligaments, if you've injured a ligament, an MRI is the only way to image it. You will not be able to see it on an X-ray. So with all of these injuries, it's very important to go and get checked out. We don't like to mess around with trauma. If someone's had a big whack, then you definitely need to be seen by a professional. But if you've had the problem sorted and you just want some more tips in staying fit, active and healthy in your 50s and beyond, the other thing you can do is grab a copy of my book, Thriving Beyond 50, which will give you 78 natural strategies to keep your mobility and independence in later life. And the other thing to say is please remember to like and subscribe the channel if you haven't already. It really helps me to reach more people. That's all I've got for you today. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below this video and I look forward to speaking to you on the next one.